Good morning. Well, I think we're going to go plant corn today. It is brutal cold. Like, it's too cold to plant corn, but we're going to do it anyway because it's the 27th of April and it can't stay cold for very long. It just can't. So we're going to do it. Um, we've got lots of seed in the planter because we had just filled up before we got rained out. But we're going to need some more fertilizer, so we're going to load some up while we're here. The other thing I wanted to try and do before we head to the field this morning is uh, change those float balls in there. So I'm trying to figure out how to do that because I have to get the old ones out. And they're full of fertilizer and they're clear at the bottom of those sight gauges. And that's going to be a little bit of a challenge. All right. Um, I got those balls replaced. We put glass ones in there that are heavier so hopefully those work a little bit better um, and then I was cleaning stuff off and I noticed that we had some smashed hoses I missed this one right here she got flat it flat spotted because it was like this and when it folds it's hitting this and so we need to make sure that those are off to the side and I'm gonna replace that one that one that one and that one the ones back that way are okay um, a couple of them seem to be all right where they weren't like this one here was not getting smashed so that one's okay but uh, yeah we need to fix that I don't know how much fertilizer was getting through some but definitely was affecting stuff there so I'm gonna fix it okay well I replaced three of the hoses one of them in particular this one was really bad like I don't know how anything was flowing through that so we've probably got some streaky corn. Oh well, nothing I can do about it now. Uh, but we're going to fix our problem and make it better. So I need to get some zip ties so we can make sure that we keep those off to the side and not running across the face of that. And we need to take care of those hoses yet and tighten this one that's hanging up on the inside a little bit. All right. Well, that should work. This should work and keep those hoses up rather than down. So that they don't get smashed and I think we're good for now until we figure out something else that's wrong dad went to go look at some fields he's uh, gone a few different places and things are still a little tacky so you remember how I've told you that our ground wicks that moisture up from underneath yesterday afternoon everything looked great super dry like no problems uh, but it's gotten wetter overnight that moisture is coming up from underneath so Today is supposed to be nice and sunny and decent, just cold. Um, so hopefully this afternoon that, that sun will really come out and dry things off and we'll be able to get, get going and keep moving. But we're going to have to wait a few hours, it looks like, at least. It is really cold. Like, it is, it was below freezing this morning. It's 30, 33 degrees out right now. It's cold and it's, uh, it's not... It's not great for planting corn, but it's the 27th of April and it isn't gonna be cold for long. And like Dad and I were talking this morning and he said, what's the, how often does it happen that uh, we start planting and we just keep going until we're done and we're just, everything's done. It's very rare. And then he says, how often does it happen where we get two or three days and then we're rained out for three or four weeks and it's the end of May and we're super late before we get back in the fields. Much, much more frequently. And so, knowing the risk and the likelihood, if we can plant with dry ground conditions, we're going to do it. All right, stuff is slowly happening. Phil's getting the bean planter ready. John Deere dealer is here. He's um, putting an RTK radio on the 8RX. So that tractor has a built-in GPS receiver integrated, they call it. And... Um, um, yeah, long story short, we're, we're putting a new RTK radio on it. That's why I was running SF1 before, just because we were waiting for a bracket or something to make that work. So he's taking care of that. I've got somebody coming to pick up a uh, table out of my seed warehouse, old dining room table. So I'm, I'm going to do that. And they're trying to call me right now, but I'm here. It's okay. You don't have to call me. Oh, you're just so happy we fixed your gator, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. He's on his way there, so we're... We're getting an RTK receiver ready to go. We had to drill a hole in the new tractor. Oh, oh. But they give you a fancy grommet to fill it, so it's all good. 
So this tractor has an integrated GPS receiver. It's built right into the cap of the uh, roof instead of sitting on the front over here. And uh, the RTK radio goes back over there in that cover panel that we took off. And I just gotta find the plug and plug it in. And then we gotta make sure all the lights come on and the activations are good and figure all that out. Well, there it is. I, I can't show you the, the, the base station numbers and everything. That's probably, they wouldn't like that very much. But it is 0 0.03 miles away, which is, is right, right up there. Well, for all you guys can tell, it's a beautiful day and we should be out planting corn. And it is a really nice day. So we are loading up fertilizer. Um, we were not empty, but we're just going to put another, another 1,050 gallons in. That'll get us close to finishing up there, but I don't think it'll be quite enough. I might have Dad bring up that blue tank with a little bit in it later. Um, we are uh, we are still very cold and waiting for things to warm up and dry out a little bit, but we'll get it in here. So we're putting some zinc in here right now. We need 25 gallons of that. Uh, I got a meter there. We're up to almost 15. And then once we're done sucking the 1034-0 out into there, we'll suck that in. And then we use ATS out of that tank make my concoction I need a little bit of a uh, little bit of boron for these 12 and a half gallons of that and then some nitro also which is in jugs oh, I've got to be able to get them so this is that Nitro Ultra. It is made by this Ag Explorer company. Um, I used some of their fuller feed products last year on some stuff. Uh, I did not use any of this. We're gonna we're gonna try it. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't buy a lot because well I wasn't really impressed with the rest of their stuff last year, but um, it's it's got some nitrogen in it and it's very 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 tiny amounts of some other stuff. Honestly, at a pint to the acre, I don't know how I can do anything. But that's what they told me they wanted. I told them I would give them a few acres to run their program, all of their stuff. And uh, this is my irrigated field where I'm trying to push the heck out of it. So anything that I can do to add anything to it, uh, we're going we're gonna to try it up there. Look at this kid. Look at him. <sighs> oh, I tell you what. <laughs> He's going to hurt himself. This is dangerous. Well, we took the tractor over and we're fueling it up. This kid, I tell you what, yeah, that back tire's a little, a little wobbly. Grandpa took some stuff back to the woods and Brayson found a trash bag and wants to give it to him, so he's waiting for him to come back up with a backhoe. All right, well, the planter's ready to go, but we thought we'd better come and take a look at the field. So we're up here where we got rained out the other day. Just, it's dry enough on, dry enough on top, but we thought we'd better take a look. Nice, loose, soft dirt. Let's go. You got plenty of drinkers on top. Yep. Okay. We'll be up here shortly. All right, we are back to the uh, farm here. Brock is here. He's getting the disc ready to go. Grayson and I are going to go plant corn. One thing after another. Phil had some trouble with a uh, his electric air compressor that runs the downforce on that bean planter. It wasn't running, wasn't kicking on. So we do a little troubleshooting. It's a connection issue on the back of the tractor with the wire harness. But I got that figured out and fixed it. Time to go plant corn. Uh, one more thing I forgot. So a few of you have mentioned this, and I did, I'm well aware of it, but uh, You'll remember on our way home the other day when we got rained out with this tractor, our tracks got pretty warm. Well, John Deere recommends talc or some sort of lubricant on them, but they say in the book, and I read the book so I know, that it's only necessary uh, on trips of over 10 miles after you've been driving for 10 miles uh, or when they're brand new, which they are brand new, but they were not when we went on the road. We had been in the field. And from when they got hot, we had actually already gotten stuck, and they were well lubricated, shall we say. So I didn't think it was that necessary, and we didn't go 10 miles. Um, but since we washed them, and they're relatively clean, I decided that we would dump a little talc on them. So we're just kind of sprinkling it on the mid-rollers and down in between there. It will distribute itself. 
around the rest of them and make a terrible dusty mess. Sorry. As we go here. But it should help keep them cool a little bit and not sticky. There, now we're ready. Back in the field, getting her unfolded. Fell asleep on the way. Look at that, we got dust and everything. Um, good news and bad news, kind of. Good, mostly good news on our um, check valves. Hold on, phone call. All right, anyway, so those uh, balls that we changed in those flow meters, look at that, beautiful, floating right in the middle. We can see them, that side there, nice and even, level, the same. That's exactly what we wanna see. We'll zoom in over here on the other side and it's not exactly what we wanna see see we got a little bit of variation we got a high one we got some low ones we got that one third one in there I'm not sure where it's at if it's pegged out all the way at the top or what but there's a little variation that's not ideal um, so we'll take a look around see if we can find a pinched hose or something maybe I missed this morning or something that would be causing a restriction in one of those lines and uh, even them out I got them about as good as it gets uh, a couple of my valves my metering tubes were uh, not set quite right, so that's good. That's why it's important that those are working and that we can see them. So uh, I know that they were all getting fertilizer before because the balls all floated straight to the top, um, so there was fertilizer in them, but we weren't necessarily getting them on even. And now with those heavier balls that don't just float straight to the top, they you can see them. Honk the horn. Oh! You hear it. I did hear it. So, all right, well, we've got about 100 acres left in this field. Doesn't really look like it, but that's what we got. Not quite. We're up to 80 acres planted. There's 173 in here, so 90. And then there's 13 over there on the corner, and then we've got five acres across the river to finish up. So we are going to need more seed and likely more fertilizer to do all of this. I did not. It's still in the fridge. So um, we'll just keep plugging away at it, at it here for a while. Okay, we've made it up to our next irrigation lane. You guys remember the other day when we were up here, I was talking about the tram line settings. The green lines on there are tram lines. Uh, kind of reminds me where I need to shift over 10 feet. And uh, I couldn't figure out how to get them in the right spot. Well, one of my viewers, one of you guys, uh, told me in the, in the comments section how to do it. And you were right, and I figured it out. So you got to go in to this uh, set track and then hit the pencil icon. And then there's this thing here that says show tram lines. And when you click on that, it brings up this page where you can then move those tram lines. And so right there is where I want it. And we're gonna just hit okay and get out of there. And that's that's exactly what we wanted. So now we're to this end. So we lift up and then as we turn, we kind of make a little bit of a wider turn than normal. So we'll have a 10 foot gap. And once we get back close, we hit this button and it shifts our line 120 inches is where I've got it set. It's 10 feet. So now we have a 10 foot gap. And that's where we'll pull our irrigation gun out later this summer. Maybe, hopefully not, but maybe, probably. almost made it all the way across this field. We're a long ways from where we started a couple of days ago, so uh, we've got to go along that edge. I'm still sleeping. Um, but yeah, it's, we're, we're getting there. We're going to run out of seed here eventually, but we're not there yet. Reggie's cold. Yep. Okay, well, um, we are switching children. Ryland's coming for a ride. Brayson is at home with mom and not very happy. Sorry, bud. Stepped on a shoe. And since we were stopping there and stuff, and I'm gonna need some seed here in a little bit. Um, oh, we have seed here. We went back and got it. Yes, we do have seed here. So now we're ready to keep going. The problem is we're gonna be in the back. We've got those two triangle pieces sort of in the back of this field to do, and uh it's not gonna be up close to this seed again for a while, and so we're gonna have to drive up, but it's okay. We'll make it work. I'll show you a map in a second. I need to wash my windows. Yikes. Uh, here's a good spot where uh, 
that section control that we added to our fertilizer system is gonna gonna pay off here this year so um, we are overlapping because I planted two passes along that side and so the outside row of that is right here so we're filling in on this side of the planter we've always had seed shutoffs oops so that um, we don't overlap the planting uh, and the seeding side of it but before with the old fertilizer system that we had uh, it put fertilizer on the whole planter every time it was down and moving so we would have been doubling up that side now our outside four rows there are off and I don't know if I can zoom in and good enough that you'll be able to see it because of the dirt on my windshield and the dust but um, the yeah the, they're different there and there see how the balls are up on the one and down on the other and then in a second here they're all gonna go up because we're gonna get back right there so now we're past the, the corner over there and that is an even planter pass and so the whole thing is planting and so that is a really cool thing where it's saving us some fertilizer so we're not overlapping. Now I promised you a view of the field so here it is we started up here on the north side we worked across that color change is where we switched varieties there was a huge population difference in the two varieties that we have planted so far the one we're currently planting gets planted outrageously high um, and then yeah we have these two triangles to finish up here yet part of this one is irrigated none of this one is because we can't reach it we can't get our hose it's not long enough to reach back there and so where we're still planting this super heavy high pop hybrid uh, we're gonna keep going across this triangle until we run out and hopefully we don't make it too much past uh, what's irrigated and what's not because I really don't want to plant this hybrid in a dry land situation hey look the neighbor spraying his wheat or stopping to watch us but spraying his wheat whoa there well we are uh, on the last pass before our last irrigation lane and one of my rows just ran empty which means we are about out of seed so we're gonna go look in the tanks see if we need to level them off even them out a little bit plant until we run out again and then uh, we'll have to go load up this one was a little uneven this one's got a little bit more, so we'll scoop some from there and put it in this one and get them fairly level and then we'll be good enough. Should we do a little digging while we're out here? Yeah. Let's see how it looks? Yeah. Okay, let's check this row. Oh, we got a bit of a slot. I don't like seeing that. So we're back here along the uh, river and this ground is, right there's our seed. Good seed to soil contact. It looks good. I just don't like seeing quite such a defined seed trench there. Um, but some of this ground back here along the river, we're in a low spot. It is a little bit damper here. It doesn't feel too bad though. Yeah, you can go back in the tractor. I mean, we've got plenty of moisture. It's none too dry, that's for sure. If we could just get some heat, the seed would take off and we would be in great shape. Where you at? Oh, this might be the row that ran out. Yeah, row two. That's probably no seed there. Right there it was. Two inches. I'm happy with it. All right, so we have just a teeny tiny little bit left to do here, but I think we got a row that's running out, which means we're gonna have more running out soon. But we're gonna go with it. The monitor's gonna yell at me. It's row 15. It's still planting some, but not very much. Yeah. And there goes 14. But I literally have like 200 foot passes to do. And since we're clear back here in the corner, and I don't want to drive all the way back here again, we're just we're just gonna have two rows that are a little thin and don't plant all the way. But that is okay, it will be fine. And well, then we'll go back, we'll load up, and we got that back triangle to do back over that, that way. This last pass, we have a half of another one. I don't know, we'll see. But here's where we're at, way down there, 
We got all that done, so we got to do that little other triangle up there. Brock got done disking what we needed disks, so he's up here helping us uh, get our seed ready. We need 450 pounds in each one. I think I got this auto thing figured out. It's super easy to do um, once you know what you're doing. So we'll go up here and watch it. We need, uh, yeah, we're going to put 18 units in the planter, which is enough to do our backfield. The piece to the north there and the five acres that we need over there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think we just ran out of fuel in our seed tender. Brock and Rylan went to get us some gas. Why do we need gas? The motor needs gas to run so that it can put our seed in the planter. You thought it was for the tractor? Yeah. No, the tractor doesn't use gas. What does the tractor burn? Wood. Wood? <laughs> no. What do we put in tractors to make them go? Gas. Not gas. It's huh? diesel. Diesel, that's right. It's diesel fuel. <laughs> Wood. <laughs> All right, we should have plenty of seed for the rest of what we're going to do tonight. Thanks, Brock. Did you uh, film anything today? He did not. Okay, that's all right. This irrigation path is a pretty handy little lane to get back to the back field where we've got to go, though, isn't it? Where were we? Where were we? We were way over there. But we already got that done, so now we got to go back here. All right, it's almost Ryland's bedtime, so he has to go back with Grandpa. Came and picked him up. Just turning on the end, and I noticed that one of my rows looks a little different than the others. Row two here, notice how it's just a little darker. Something doesn't seem right, so I thought we better get out and check and look and see what's going on. Our gauge wheel, look at that. We've got a loose gauge wheel, and it's not letting our closing wheel turn, so. We gotta fix that. Much better. Got it adjusted in. We'll just glance at the rest of them real quick. Make sure we don't have any more. Good to go. Carry on. So we're getting right down to the end here. You guys see those lights over there? Do you see those? We've got our first light game win of the year. Against people that don't know their plan, but still. That's Phil planting beans. We got beans in the ground. Finally, finally. Dang YouTube farmers needing their thumbnail images and everything, stopping the tractors, not getting anything done. Ah. She is a beautiful outfit though, isn't it? Planting rig, outfit, whatever. Whatever, you know what I'm talking about. I also wanted to check and see how much fertilizer we got left. Just under 200 gallons in this tank. We had a little bit on the planter. We have about 18 or 19 acres to plant yet. And I'm trying real hard to not have to go get more. So uh, we're rationing a little bit. But our normal rate here is 10 and a half gallons per acre. So we should be right on. Um, but it can fluctuate between 8 and 14. So. Uh, I think we're gonna be make. I think we're gonna make it. I think we're gonna be good. Done. We are done with this field. What a big one it was to get out of the way. That is just some really dark green where we planted that one variety there. But uh, it is all covered. Let me find the page with acres on it, and I'll tell you what we planted up here. One hundred and seventy on sixty-nine point eight one. But uh, there's like one hundred and seventy, three hundred and seventy-four in this field. But we have ten foot gaps that we skipped scattered throughout it so there's about 170 here we can irrigate about 135 140 of that so we can't quite hit it all like i said that triangle in the back that we just did we can't hit and uh obviously we don't pull it all, all the way to the point there but that is the advantage of our traveling gun is that we can cover the vast majority of this field uh it would be possible to put a pivot on this field but just looking at the outline and the shape of it there um, you're not going to cover nearly as much. The best thing to do would be to find a point somewhere out here where you can make a three-quarter circle. Um, it, it would be doable, but expensive. And uh, just, yeah, we just haven't done that. Probably won't ever do that. But you guys remember that 360 
rain deal that I saw in Louisville, or, yeah, in Louisville at the farm show. That's what I would love to have up here. I think that would work perfect in this field. So while we are done here and heading out, um, one last thing that I want to do, we've got a planter all folded up. We are right in the middle of this field. This is our where our center lane is going to be, where the um, we're going to lay the pipe and, and set the traveler and all that kind of stuff. And so I set the auto track line so that we're straight and we're just going to drive all the way across here. That way, when we come back in a month or two, uh, we've got some lines or, and a, a path that we can follow that is a straight line and will, um, you know, tell me where to kill the corn so that we have this center line. We're gonna, we'll, we'll mow the corn off is what we will do. But So that's what we're doing now. We're just gonna drive this all the way out to our last uh, irrigation lane, then we'll jump out and out to that north road because the field on the corner up there is where we're headed. This is one of those fields that by the time you get the end rows done, you're like half done with the field. I mean, there's just end rows everywhere. Big long ones along the ditch here, but won't take us long here. About a half hour. We've done it. We're done here. So um, now we just have a little five acres, uh, that chunk of that triangle field that we need to finish up from uh, the other day when we ran out of seed there. We've got that same variety in now and we're going to go finish planting that. So this is back into some of that cover crop ground. Um, it will be interesting to see how our guest row turns out over there because when we planted this, we were on SF1, now we're running RTK, and I don't think they lined up perfectly like they were supposed to, but, well, they're not really supposed to because the SF1's not that accurate. Um, but we don't have very much to do here. More point rows. We've been doing a lot of point rows today, but we've just got to fill in this point. Really, there's five acres here, so uh, we should have enough seed. I think we've got enough fertilizer. And we're just going to get it done uh, and then head for home here. Just so happens that Phil is working right across the road from us here. Those are his lights heading straight for us. So, yeah, we got to curve around this guy's house lot here. Well, there's the last little piece of the triangle. So we are done. We can head back to the farm. Um, let's see if Phil's got his radio on. See if he needs anything. Get stopped here because we got to get folded up. Come on. Hey Phil, you got your radio? Yeah. Do you need anything? I'm done and going back to the farm. Okay, you got your truck up here, or are you just going to bring the tractor back, or do you need any... Okay. But my pickup's up at the barn. Oh. Oh. Alright, well, we'll see you tomorrow then. Alright, well, let's go ahead and wrap this one up. It is just before 10.30 at night, so, um... Yeah, we had a, a decent day. I mean, obviously it was a pretty late start getting uh, going planting there, but uh, oh, we had to do 120, 130 acres today, something like that. So we're doing good. We are well over a quarter of the way planted, close to a third of our corn in the ground. So uh, I feel really good about where we're at. We're going to have a big day tomorrow. Dad's got um, another 30, 35 acres worked up for us, ready to go, and he is going to go likely right across the road tomorrow and uh, keep keep stuff moving for us so that we can keep planting. We've got a lot of ground worked up for Phil so he can keep planting beans so that is good and Brock's going to be here tomorrow. He's going to take off with the disc and keep working corn stalks down so we can keep getting beans in the ground. So it looks like, I haven't looked at the weather for a while, but it looks like we definitely have tomorrow and Friday and maybe most of the day on Saturday before the next chance of rain. So... We could get another three or 400 acres of corn planted in the next two days. So uh, that would be fantastic. I may look very, very hard at doing my uh, corn plot on Friday. Uh, one of them, at least, the one out here. So uh, we'll try and make those plans tomorrow. But anyway, thanks for watching today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit that like and subscribe button for me. If you uh, have any questions and comments, leave them down below. 
and we will see you again tomorrow from the seat of an 8RX.